Hi there everybody, my name is Heratoga and welcome to a special episode of Vintage Story. Yep, that's right, this is a special episode and I thought I'd do something special because we have reached 500 subscribers on the channel. So I wanted to do something different for you all today and I've, I've chosen Vintage Story to make this video because that's what I've been uh, doing for months, so uh, the reason why my channel's grown is mostly because of uh, Vintage Story, so here we are. Alright, so what are we going to be getting up to in this uh, lovely episode? Well, we're currently in my creative world, so what I want to do is show you around my creative world and give you a bit of a tour and, and tell you some of the things I get up to here and then I want to talk about my channel why I have it, why I do it and I'll talk a bit about myself as well and then at the end uh, I'm going to give some shout outs to three content creators and we'll end the episode after that so uh, yeah, let's go have some fun first and then we'll have a bit of a chat. Alrighty folks, now I haven't planned any of this so I'm, I'm literally winging it. <laughs> um, but I think we'll start off in the middle here. Um, like in the other block game, you know, when you're in creative world you can fly around but I've got plenty to show you so... Yeah, we'll start in the middle. Look, there's a replica of our house from the series. <laughs> Uh, and I chose to go with that design uh, but this was the original house that I made uh, and the reason why I didn't pick this house is because the, the place where we moved to in the first or second episode I can't remember now uh, there wasn't that many sandstone cobblestone blocks uh, around that I could harvest so I had to shrink I had to come back in here and shrink the uh, design down to a smaller house and then uh, in the end uh, we ended up with this one um, let's go inside see looks the same inside so apart from that stuff I'll show you that stuff in a bit <laughs> but yeah this is a replica of our house except for these we haven't made these corner cupboards yet um we need to do some more furniture making and stuff but uh, yeah we've got our cellar down here now and our bed over there and uh yeah lovely yeah and then we've got our vineyard out the back as well i even uh, designed a vineyard i do often come here if, if i've got an idea of a building that i want to make uh, for our series, I'll I will come to my creative world first, and I'll create it in here. And then what I do is I count, I write down all the materials that I've used to make the building, and then I count how many of the blocks of that material that I need, and then I'll take a couple of print screens uh, of the building or. What, what I like to do is draw like blueprints of it on pieces of paper because um, it's it saves looking at, at clicking about on multiple screens and looking at images you know I can I can just look at a piece of paper instead it's quicker but anyway um, yeah so yeah this was the house we would have had <laughs> Um, and we ended up with this one. It's, it's a shame you can't make these smoking chimney uh, pots though. You can make the chimney pots, but you can't make the ones that smoke. You can only place those uh, down from uh, the creative menu. Uh, but you can, in your solo world, go into creative mode and place down these uh, chimney pots here. I mean, maybe, I don't know, guys, with your permission, like... What if in the series I actually made the pots and then went into creative mode, got the smoky versions, placed those down and then threw away the pots that I made? Because technically 
I would have created them. It's just, it would be cool to have smoky ones, right? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so, uh, yeah. And I have been designing furniture in this, uh, in this creative world as well. And I went a bit above and beyond the call of duty. And I thought, oh, let's have a sink. So uh, I made a sink. And I learned how to do the sink thing from one of the content creators that I want to give a shout out uh, to uh, soon. So, uh, yeah. And then I thought, oh, what if I put a hand towel on the rail? And what if we have a white sink instead of a brown one, you know? So uh, this is the second version of the sink. And uh, yeah, we've got a cooker here. You can't see inside of it, but I, I want to make one where it is hollow in there and you can see through the glass and you can see the grill and stuff. That would be awesome. Uh, but yeah, we've got a cooker. We've got a washing machine. <laughs> we've got a fridge freezer. Uh, we've even got a toilet. Look at that, a toilet. And it's got water in it too. Yeah, with the handle on the right hand side because we're I'm English, so I heard that in America you have them on the other side. <laughs> uh, I don't know if if that's uh, counts for the whole of America, but uh, yeah, <laughs> in the old days in England we used to have the the chains that hung from the 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 back box which was on a wall with a pipe going down to the toilet, and then we had like a chain pole thing. Yeah, yeah, how far toilets have come. <laughs> um, well, uh, we've even got a shower as well. I mean, isn't that cool? We're going to have all these things in our modern house uh, in the series. And uh, speaking of our modern house, here it is. Like, so we will get around to finishing the house in the series. It's just sometimes, you know, when you've got a load of things on the go at the same time, you know, it just takes time, but we will get it done. I mean, look, this is the inside. And we're going to have all the walls like this on the inside. It's not going to be like this. It's going to, it's going to be like this. And we're going to have, like, borders and stuff. So, uh, yeah, we've got a fireplace with a, a chunky iron fire guard thing. Um yeah, we've got an archway which will go into this area and then a, a big archway into here. We might have a table and chairs here and then in this one we could put the kitchen. Um, but yeah, let's get on our feet and go upstairs. Look, there's a cupboard under the stairs. Harry! Harry's not in there. But yes, yeah, so let's go upstairs. Put a handrail. So we're going to make all of this in the series. And in here we've got a bedroom. Uh, we've got another cupboard, and in here we've got an ensuite, so we're going to have a little bathroom in here. <laughs> um, we've got another bedroom here, and this one's got a walk-in wardrobe. Yeah, I'm going to turn this into a walk-in wardrobe. And then this, there's another cupboard under the stairs. This way, uh, I'm going to make an arch there, but uh, yeah, we've got another little cupboard, a little storage room. Um, and then we've got a, a master bedroom in here. <laughs> but yes, we'll get there, folks, we'll get there. And if we go up a bit further, we've got the attic. Yeah, look at that. So all that, all the dungeon loot that we find, you know, all them ruined pieces of things, we can store in the attic and uh, put some cobwebs up and stuff if that's possible yeah we, we do have cobwebs in the game yes um, but yeah yeah that's uh this is the house we're gonna have uh, eventually and then all of this modern appliances stuff if i can fly it <laughs> that's all uh that's all gonna go in there like uh this the washing machine etc and the toilet. I've got to design a bath as well. Um, uh, but we've, we've got a shower. And uh, this fridge, I want to show you something really cool, guys. Let me just make it dark. So if you if you if you use your creative world to design things, you can. There's there's a button below your escape key, and when you press it, it brings up this HUD. And here you can change the time of day, so you can make it dark. But 
But look at this, right? There's light emitting from the fridge. Because it's the light is hidden, it's underneath the fridge. I mean, look how dark it actually is, but if I fly up a bit, you can see. <laughs> so, if I make it daytime again. So, um, in our big house, we're going to have a fridge that we'll leave open, and it will provide light uh, inside the kitchen. I think that would be quite cool. I've got all these little things, like little jars and eggs. <laughs> and sausages, a block of cheese or butter, a bowl of jelly <laughs> and some more juice and a little freezer compartment at the top there but uh, yeah you, you can you can design all all these kind of things uh, in the creative world it's, it's a good idea to use your creative world if you want if you've got ideas you know uh, I mean we've got we've got other stuff like a toaster <laughs> I might put some bread in one of the sections, just like over the top a little bit. We've got a microwave that you can see inside of. We've even got the, the little wave guide guard thing there. That, yeah, and, and round the back you've got the, the metal plate on the back. So, <laughs> look, look, we've got a widescreen TV. It's not very vintage, is it? It's getting ultra modern now. But yeah, we've got a widescreen TV. We've got an old school TV. You remember them old TVs that uh, looked like this, and some of them had a, like a VHS combi. Yeah. <laughs> and look, we've got a hi-fi system as well. Like, hey, hey, cool. And we've a couple of tape decks. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna have all this kind of stuff. Uh, a little remote uh, in our in our modern house over there. So. Yeah, this is where I came to design the farms as well. Um, uh, I originally designed this one first, and I thought, well, is there a better fencing that we can have uh, instead of just using this fence? Because I don't trust it keeping the rabbits out, you know, because they can jump. Uh, so I messed about with another coloured version of it, and then I thought, well, what about trestling? Because that's a thing. So I designed trestling, I designed these trestling sections, and then I designed the arch thing. And I thought, oh, wonder what one of these would look like with trestling around it. So that's why, in our series, we have trestling around our farms here. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, there's our B apiary. And, uh, yeah, I... I I put the trestle in there thinking, well, we could do it that to that too, but then I thought, well, nothing really attacks the, the beehive skeps, so we'll just stick with normal fencing for the beehives. It'd look a bit silly if everything was trestled, you know. But, uh, yeah. yeah, you can build bigger arches, you know, you don't just have to have a little one over a door. You could have, like, a three-block wide path and have a big arch. You could have a an arch tunnel version of this so you can put potted plants up against the sides and stuff uh, a bit like this you know yeah, you can put a table in here and a seat and have a little tea set <laughs> which uh, in our house here around the back because this is the front around the back we're going to have like a fish pond and uh, I thought I'd place one of those uh Trestle I don't know what you call these areas, but uh, yeah, it's like a tea, an, a, an outhouse, summer house thing. I don't know. I don't know the word. Um, but yes. Um, and speaking of fish, something else cool that I want to show you that we're going to have in our house, maybe a couple of them, and that is a fish tank. I mean, look at that, guys. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Like, that's just so amazing. I had to put blocks above the water, though, because, yeah, you get seasons in your creative world, and I don't know how to turn off the seasons, so it kept freezing the water, so I put blocks above it. But, yeah, look at that. That's why we needed, if, if some of you remember, 
when I went into a little dungeon, we found a, uh, a deformed skull, and I was like, oh, we need one of those for something special. Well, this is what it's for. Yeah. Um, so if I make it dark again, because you can put lanterns in water, if some of you didn't know that. Um, so if I make it dark... I mean, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Let's hide my hood. Look at that. It's so beautiful. And when you're filling it up with water, leave the top square. Don't, like, fill it with water and you'll get these bubbly effects. And you can hear the water running, too. <laughs> it's just... The only thing is with these fish tanks... Look, we've got a smaller one here. Is, uh... You, you can't catch fish. <laughs> so, in the series, we're going to have to go into creative mode and, uh, and manually put in some fish when we have one of these fish tanks. So, uh, because there's no point having a big fish tank if you can't put fish in it. So, uh, yeah. It is for a good cause. Um, but yeah, you can change the lighting. Uh, that's got a yellow light uh, in there, but you can use... We've got all these colours. Green, yellow, um, pink or purple. Uh, yeah, it's pink. That's purple, that's red, and that's blue. Um, so yeah, you can put any coloured light uh, in your fish tank. Um, I've, I've tried it with all the colours. I like the blue light. Uh, that's pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, and then uh, designed a little one too. If you do make them, uh, have like a, a sandy bottom, you know, don't use dirt, because dirt's just like, what? Why, why dirt? Why not sand? You know, all fish tanks have a sandy type of material in there. So that's what I'll do in our uh, fish tank in the series. Um, yeah, so this is our current temporal defense bunker but our original one was one of these look we've got little uh little dummies down here just so to test out you know will i be able to see them and throw spears at the drifters you know <laughs> um, but yeah this is our original uh, our original one and uh, they kept running away didn't they so we had to think of something different, but uh, I messed about in here and I, made, I turned it into a gatehouse. So in the series, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make our old defense bunker into a gatehouse. And then I'm going to add one of these in the middle because th these are really good. These work really well. Like once you're inside it, you know, you can... Just ride out the temporal storm and uh, throw things down there and at the end you can go and harvest them and whatever ones are left over but we'll have that in the middle and then we could like put a wall around it with some towers in the corner and have a, and have a castle at the back of our uh, house so that's another thing we can do in the series is build a castle because you gotta have a castle guys come on <laughs> Um, yeah, and then this little, uh, structure here, you know, recently we, we've found some translocators, or well, when you ladder your way out of the translocator room to the surface, um, instead of just having a hole in the ground with a ladder poking out, put a structure over it, so when you come out of the ladder, you're in a room that's sheltered from the, the, uh, the drifters, and you can sleep the night before you travel back home and you can put stuff away in your chests so uh, that's what i want to do is build one of these simple little uh, huts uh, over where the translocators are and they don't take much materials um, so yeah we're going to do that anything else to show you there's a there's kind of a replica of our blacksmith there with our uh, charcoal pick uh, charcoal it's a fly in my face it's summer <laughs> yeah, our charcoal things and then our pit kiln um 
and then our uh, armory there and this is where I came to design our uh, signs for the blacksmith and the armory <laughs> we go inside look see it's the same and uh, yeah I missed out these things during the beautification episode but you can do like little cracks in the tiles and sink one of the tiles down a little bit um, yeah so yeah and I designed the window arches you know to stick on the windows and uh, oops chiseled out some damage in the wall and put the debris on the floor look <laughs> it's all these little things that you can do in beautification you know just to add detail to your areas and look rocks we have rocks and debris <laughs> um yeah and then our blacksmith here is this is our blacksmith and uh, you you can't you yeah, know the, the the creative world doesn't yeah it it doesn't go that far down so uh I couldn't do the underneath section that has to be on the surface but uh, <laughs> there you go um it's a little tiny house here tiny start at home that anyone can build on day one you know but uh yeah so oh get back up there there's our windmill here a little replica of our windmill and speaking of windmills look at this it's an airship i want to make an airship one day in vintage and use the sails as the uh engines and make some big sails to catch the wind and uh that would be cool. Imagine living on an airship in Vintage Story. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> of course, you'd have to have like a rope ladder to get in and out of it, you know. Uh, but uh, I'll show you that stuff in a minute. Um, but yeah, I designed a, a clock tower. right? Because I thought, oh, what if we have a clock tower as well? Wouldn't that be cool? So these are like sections you can replicate like as tall as a as a windmill and then at the top you could put the clock and then on top of that you could put the, like the top bit so uh yeah so whatever ideas you get you know come come here and make it have a play around and uh yeah and you'll slowly build up a collection of ideas you know <laughs> and you can test things out as well um, let's go back over here. So we've been messing about with making paths and roads. Uh, this is the barn that I want to build uh, in the series. There are chicken coops there. Now uh, I've designed a shed to store all the tools and stuff like that. So yeah, there's a, there's a shed that we can make, and um, there's a big barn. With the uh, the hay bale crane outlets there, um, go all the way around. It's the same on the other side, so you can just walk straight through it. And I always put like the materials I've used outside like this, uh, just so I can see what things I need uh, to create in the uh, in the series. Um, if, let's go in there and have a look. Check it out. Now this is going to be a big build, uh, folks, and it's going to take uh, a lot of wood to to make this. And look at all these fire clay shingles that I've got to make. There's just so many; it's ridiculous. Um, but yeah, we've got four sections here. Uh, we've got one for the pigs. Look, I've put bony soil in the ground. Look, just <laughs> that's where the pigs go, and then. Uh, I've got these here so I can like access the food troughs a lot easier and then on this side we could have um, like some sheep uh, we could have extra chickens perhaps um, yeah and, uh, and then there's a spare one for something else maybe I don't know what yet but we can go upstairs and we can get into those uh, rooms by going down to, through the top and uh, if there's an animal in here they can't they can't get out because of this so but we can get in and out if we use the ladders and uh, 
important stuff. Let's just fly out for quickness. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. Yeah. Can you even access the hay hatch thing? And just like drop outside. But yeah, that's the barn design that I'm going to go with, I think. Um, it's quite a big building, like I say. But uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, well, we're getting to the end of everything I want to show you. I, I can't stop looking at these. This is so cool, man. Uh, we're we're going to have all these things. <laughs> uh, it's a shame. You can... I wonder if there's a way of, like, getting a painting and placing it on a block and then making a TV around it and around the back, you know? Because then you've got a picture on your screen, haven't you? Yeah, I'm going to try that in this world first one day experiment with it right what do i need to show you next oh yes oh okay i forgot this too yeah a conservatory on the side of our house yeah we're gonna have a conservatory so i've been messing about with glass and frames and stuff like that so it's not an easy thing to build actually yeah, it's quite difficult so uh, <laughs> we'll get there so recently we made a, a pulverizer in our last episode and I talked about stepping up the gear system. So I came in here to practice stepping up and stepping down the gear systems to, uh, to get extra output. Uh, and uh, I had stuff everywhere and then once I figured it out uh, I reduced it all down and I came up with this. So uh, that's a step up. So this shaft is this shaft here with the windmills attached to it. And it turns this big cog, which turns a little cog, which turns another uh, another shaft, uh, another big uh, gear there. And I've done it here a lot. And look at the speed. We've gone from this to this. Just, just by doing this. <laughs> That fly keeps landing on my face. It's annoying. Go away. <laughs> Aren't flies annoying? Like, they always just land on your skin and then fly off and flap in your face. But, uh, yeah, so I've added a, a transmission system here with a clutch because we don't have this yet in the series. But uh, all you have to do is just right click and you can turn it on. I mean, isn't that cool? It's got to recalculate, but uh, once it does, then, uh, yeah, we're on a gentle breeze now. So, but you don't have to have two of them on, you could just have one on. Yeah, the, the wind behaves a bit differently in the creative world than what it does in the game. It's, uh, it can be a bit strange, you know. But for a fresh breeze, or gentle breeze, that is good. That is good. But I did learn something. If you even step up your gear once, you're going to need more windmills. A lot more windmills, because <laughs> even just once, four windmills wasn't enough to power two hellhammers. It, it kept freezing. Uh, so yeah, if you step up your gear system once, you're going to need more power. Um, so it's a good job I built the windmill with like extra uh, windmill things there. So, But uh, I think what we've got going on for now in the series is enough for what we need. But um, I, I just did it for the for the sake of learning and showing you all uh, how simple it is to, to step it up. You can even step down, like, so you can, if, if, if this is turning fast and you want it to turn slow, you can step down and, and have that, and this is the setup. It's just the opposite way around of this. So if you want to pause the screen, uh, and look at it, that's how you step up. Okay, and then this is how you step down. 
So there you go. <laughs> and I, I discovered something really strange about these angled gears. You can keep placing them on top of each other at an angle. And they work. Isn't that really weird? Like, look at that. They're not attached to anything. They're just in midair. It's crazy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there you go, folks. I think I've shown you everything. Uh, what I've been getting up to throughout the whole series so far. Because this was a blank world at the beginning of the series. Um, first thing I did was this place here, and then I did this one. Uh, I think I did this one as well. Uh, and then I did all this stuff here. So it's grown and grown and grown. And uh, some of them have been ideas from you folks as well, and suggestions too. Like, get a better defence base. So we did. We made a better defence base. So, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I tested it out here and placed some drifters down. And, uh, yeah, it took took a few tweaks, but I, I got it refined well enough in the end. And uh, that's what we got now. But you, but you don't have to do the temporal storms in the game. You can sleep through it if you wait to the last 30 seconds you know when it tells you the temporal storm is imminent and you've got 30 seconds left yeah just sleep in your bed and it'll skip through the temporal storm but if you do want the, that extra loot then you're gonna have to do the the defense thing and uh, fight them all and collect all the loot so yeah there we go i hope you've uh, enjoyed all this let's have a big bigger view of everything yeah. <laughs> but uh, right, so the next stage is uh, talking about the channel. But uh, where can we go to have a chat? Uh, we could get a campfire going. Let's see. Let's go. Nope. Oh, man. Uh, we need a fireplace. There we go. Fire pit. Let's get some wood. Let's get a load of wood. And we need a torch to light it. Torch. There we go. We've got a torch. All right, now where can we sit? Ooh, where can we sit? I don't want to sit over there because it would be noisy. I might actually turn those off. Yeah, you get you get more of a uh, a range in your creative world. You can access things a lot further away. But uh... right, let's find a place to sit. We could sit at the top of a tower, maybe. Yeah, because we're here. Why not? Let's plunk uh, plunk it there, and then we'll go in it. We'll put all the wood in. Uh, let's make it night time. It's about to turn night anyway. Yeah, that this light level will probably look really weird on YouTube because of the compression. There we go. All right, so let's uh, light it up and sit down and have a chat. You sit on this trap door here. If I can remember how to sit down, is it G? It's G. <laughs> It's G, Jimmy. Alrighty, so why do I do YouTube? Well, this is going to be a bit of a long answer. So I hope you're ready for this. <laughs> I am disabled. Uh, I'm not going to give you a sob story, but I had to come out of work uh, due to an accident I had. I got injured. I was working alone. And it was at the end of my shift and I was exhausted and I had to do some heavy lifting but I crushed a section of my lower spine and my left ankle. Uh, and I was also diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Uh, even having this condition I still worked but ultimately I had an accident so now I can't work due to primarily my condition and secondarily my injury. Uh, fibromyalgia, it's, it's not an easy thing to live with. Um, 
And on top of that, spine injury, you know. But luckily I'm not in a wheelchair. Uh, spent almost a year, mostly, in, in bed. Because uh, I couldn't really do much. And I was recovering from the injury. And uh... But uh, yeah, I got a visit from somebody who works for a charity organisation. Uh, from Young Lives vs Cancer. Because uh, when you come out of work, when you're disabled like that, and you're diagnosed, and you're, you're going through the rough, you, you start thinking about your life, and like, well, what can I do? Is there anything that I can do? And, uh, yeah, I was stewing like that for a year, till I got this visit from this, uh, this man. And in one of the leaflets they gave me, I saw a section about streaming content to raise funds for charity. So I thought I finally found something I felt I could do with uh, my life. So I started up a YouTube channel <laughs> and I started making videos, uh, which my earlier videos guys, ultra bad quality and cringingly bad videos, but uh, I've left them up there anyway, because what the heck, right? <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I started making videos and learning how to do the YouTube thing, you know. Uh, eventually I do want to stream on Twitch uh, and YouTube. Uh, but the main reason for my channel in the first place is um, when I reach a point of monetization or any money I get from doing uh, streaming or my, my videos, it's all gonna go to Young Lives versus Cancer because this organization I give charity to every week and I've been doing that for months and months so uh, I'm classed as a Young Lives versus Cancer superhero and uh, what this organization does is they create homes for children and their families that have uh, cancer so they're a lot closer to the hospitals and they get all their bills paid for free for them and all their food um, and they get healthcare professionals uh, to help them and the travelling costs are free you know so they help make children with cancer's lives uh, more comfortable as possible um, and that's why I I give to them so yeah that's 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 my plan for the future of my channel and because I do have a Twitch channel but I've never streamed on it. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got to build up my confidence a bit more and get better at talking, you know, because sometimes I'm not very good at talking. Um, I think that's because of like I say, I'm not giving you a sub story, but because uh, of my loneliness and my condition you know it affects my speech sometimes and uh, I can't talk properly sometimes but uh, yeah there you go <laughs> that's why I have my channel so what games would I stream when I reach the point of confidence to start streaming <laughs> well I would all if I was streaming vintage story I would always stream Vintage Story on YouTube because uh, that's you know the place where I make the content. So, but all other games because I do play other games, folks. I am a bit of a gamer. <laughs> but um, all those other games, um, if I stream those, that will be over on Twitch. Um, uh, but yeah, I like uh, old school Doom, which is an old favourite of mine. I've, I've made some YouTube videos about Doom. Um, I've I've played a heck of a lot of Project Zomboid uh, and Seven Days to Die. Um, lots of yes, I'm gonna say the M word now, so don't put me in jail. I've played lots of Minecraft um, and lots of modded Minecraft because uh, you can get mod packs for Minecraft, which I use Curse Forge for, um, like all a fabric. That's a good mod. Um, yeah, I play a bunch of other games. Uh, a game I've recently got into, uh, which is fairly new, it's called Once Human. Some of you may have heard about that, but uh, I'm currently playing that. It's an online MMO. Um, and uh, I've recently just 
downloaded Sea of Thieves um, as well. So it's, it's those kind of games I'll probably stream on Twitch, you know, a, a variety of games. Um, but if I stream uh, Vintage Story, it will be here on uh, on YouTube. So, uh, yeah. Oh, well, well, I suppose I better talk a little bit more about me. Because uh, you know why the channel exists. You know the plans for the channel. So, here we go. Well, I live alone. Um, I used to have a cat, some of you will know. Uh, I used to have a cat called Maida, but she's recently passed now, so I am literally alone. Uh, I live out in the countryside in England, North Yorkshire. I'm 41, uh, and I've worked since I was 15, um, but I've been out of work for about eight years now. Uh, and I've been doing YouTube for over a year, uh, and still learning and getting better at it. I do drive. Uh, I got to see my parents sometimes. Um, due to my condition, though, uh, I don't sleep very well, but uh, doing YouTube gives me something to focus on. I'm on Discord uh, with my friends every day. Uh, I follow the Christian faith, although I don't go to church. Um, yeah, so uh, there we go. It's been a pleasure to talk about myself uh, and my channel to all of you in this rather special episode <laughs> and I appreciate all of you and I'm happy to have you and uh, make content so uh, all right well now it's shout out time so I want to give some shout outs to three content creators so the first one is is private lime now, he's the reason how I discovered Vintage Story. <laughs> I've been watching Private Lime for years, and he plays a variety of games. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he's done a couple of uh, series on Vintage Story, and that's how I came across Vintage Story. So I was like, wow, I have to try that game, and here we are. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so... Go and check him out. And Chase is a brilliant uh, content creator. Fantastic. I think you'd enjoy him. Um, the other content creator, um, he does a lot of vintage story content. Uh, and he's called Kurazar. Yeah, Kurazar. And I've learnt more about this game uh, from him, uh, watching him and his uh, series. So uh, I have to thank Private Lime and Kurazar uh, for Vintage Story. So uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about the actual game, uh, go and check out Kurazar. He's a very intelligent guy, uh, very well spoken, and uh, is very good at teaching and showing how to do things. Um, and and is an excellent Vintage Story uh, player as well. So. Uh, yeah, go and, go and uh, check out Kurazar. If you do check out Private Lime and Kurazar, tell them Haritoga sent you. <laughs> and the third person I want to give a shout out to is uh, Physics Games. Yep, Physics Games. He's the owner of the Discord channel who I'm a member of. And uh, yeah, I'll leave a description. Um, links in the description to all these content creators channels so uh, if you want to meet me in, on discord uh, on physics games discord channel uh, I'm there every day like I say so if you want to talk or join in with some games or whatever you can find me on discord every day <laughs> at physics's laboratory so uh, physics games is a seven days to die content creator and uh, yeah, he's, uh, he makes uh, videos about Seven Days to Die and is very good at it. So uh, if you like Seven Days to Die, go and check him out. So uh, with that all done and said, well, better turn around now, aren't I? Because we're at the end of the episode. 
But uh, we couldn't have reached this 500 subscriber mark without you guys. Um, it's absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, I just can't believe uh, how much the channel's grown in such a short time uh, because of all of you. So uh, thank you, all of you. Um, I feel privileged and honoured to have you all as viewers and subs and uh, hope I can continue to create content for you and uh, I'm really happy with um, all of the kind comments you all leave me. It's, I just sometimes I'm speechless like how kind the comments are and uh, yeah so thank you to all of you so the next landmark is a thousand subscribers can I get there can the channel get there we'll see we'll see and uh, yeah I'm gonna leave the episode there then folks I think I've covered everything I've written some of this stuff down because I'm a, you know you got to be prepared, are not you, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so come come and find me on Discord. Um, on Discord, every Friday night, we play Marbles on stream. And Physics Games uh, streams that on Twitch. And I'm there every Friday playing Marbles on stream. So if you're, if you're into that sort of thing, uh, or if you don't know what it is, go and check out Marbles on stream. And uh, come play some Marbles on Fridays with us. Yeah, come and roll with the boys and gals. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to get out of here. So I uh, hope you have a good rest of the day or night, whether it's day or night for some of you. And I uh, hope to see you in the next episode. Uh, thanks for being here. Thank you for everything. Like I say, I appreciate you all. And now you know a bit more about me, don't you? Hmm? <laughs> Alright. God bless you all. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.